so I go by the name uh, Rainbash on uh, Reddit. And I make the TFT meta spreadsheet where I aggregate uh, data from various tier lists and sources. Uh, but about myself, I've been playing TFT since the launch of the public beta. Um, I've been a league fan for many years, and um, I was also thought that Dota Auto Chess looked very cool, but uh, I was a bit late to the party. I, I couldn't really get into it. And then when they announced TFT, I was hooked. Um, Set one, I managed to reach Diamond four, and I was very happy with this. Set two, I managed Master, and currently I'm working on reaching Master again. I'm hard stuck Diamond. There we go. So how did you come up with the idea of, uh, of doing the spreadsheet? Right, so at the start of set one, uh, there were various sites for uh, displaying compositions, um, but none of them showed all the comps and units on a single page. And for me, uh, I work with two monitors when I'm playing the game. I don't want to have to click and scroll on the second monitor. So what I did is I, I started copying them down into Notepad and um, make, making it all fit on one page. Um, and try to make it as compact and readable as possible, having all the units, variations, items on there. And it, it looked terrible, but it, it worked for me. Um, so after after one patch, I did it again, and I thought if I'm doing the work, I might as well share it. So I posted it to Reddit, and uh, received a lot of po positive feedback. And then um, eventually, I started uh, putting it all into this Google spreadsheet because uh, at the time, I think Team Liquid hyped and TSM Solus both had uh, Google uh, spreadsheet uh, tier lists. And I thought that was a, a good tool to use for the task. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Uh, how long does it take you to update the um, the spreadsheet after each patch? Okay, so uh, it usually takes a couple of days for the players to figure out the new meta, and um, it takes another couple of days as well for the data analytics sites to have uh, enough relevant data to get an accurate read uh, what's what's performing well, what the trajectories are for different comps. So if the patch is on Wednesday, then it's possible to get a clear picture by maybe Friday or Saturday, depending how dominant certain comps are. Um, yeah, so if all I'm doing is uh, reordering the comps that are already in there, that were in, in there from the patch before, then it doesn't take a lot of work. But if there's massive meta shifts, uh, new comps or play styles emerging, then it's, it's a bit more work uh, getting it all in there trying to uh, fit all the relevant information onto this one row, you know, trying to figure out which items are actually the ones uh, everybody agrees on because no two tier lists or challenges agree on a single itemization. So uh, a lot of what a lot of people like about a spreadsheet and one thing that I really like about it as well is some other spreadsheets or some other sort of, you know, uh, Imgur links and things like that, they have just people's opinions, you know, and here you can see like, oh, this build and it's based on, you know, this streamer, this link and this link. So is your process whenever a sort of new patch hits is just going through different uh, websites that, you know, analyze met meta metadata and things like that and just trying making sure that all of the builds that you upload to the spreadsheet are sort of confirmed by the actual data, you know, actual professional players as well? Yeah, so uh, that I, I put a lot of, uh, or I I try to um, put a lot of emphasis on the objectivity of the sheet. Because as I said, I'm hard stuck diamond. I'm, I'm not a challenger. I can't make these lists myself. I can't uh, create the meta. I can only uh, look at it from various perspectives and try to cross references and uh, figure out what the smallest common denominator is. Uh, so what they really agree upon the various sources um, so, for example, currently there's a um, a build that's the Deathblade Hurricane uh, Caitlyn uh, Hyper Roll Comp. I believe it's uh, strong. I believe it's strong enough to be on the sheet. But currently, there's only one source that actually lists it, and the uh, the data analytics sites uh, show a very small play rate. So, 
I think it's it's a sleeper OP, but uh, since it's not being uh, listed on these sources that I I have, I'm not gonna add it just because I think it's good. Yeah, that's, that's, I think it's definitely a good approach because this way, you know, the the spreadsheet stays very objective and making sure that you know it's it's not just trying uh, and promote sort of as you mentioned uh, builds that might seem like sleeper OPs, but they might actually be uh, not not good at all. Um, and that's one of the things that I really like about the spreadsheet, which is if I sort of take a two, two weeks off uh, TFT and then come back to it, I don't have to spend, you know, hours researching what's good, what's not. I just plop your spreadsheet on the second monitor and I can literally just go into the game unless there is, you know, massive changes to economics and, and, and things like that. Um, so so the spreadsheet has advanced a lot since since I started using it. Can you walk us through sort of the changes you made since the beginning of it and the changes you want to make in the future? So, so uh, at, at some point I made a poll uh, in one of the posts to ask what kind of features uh, the, the users want. Uh, if I should cut uh, certain parts, um, for example, on the left hand side, you've got the origins and classes. Um, at some point I added also the comp name. So you've just got the title. And uh, I got the feeling that perhaps people don't need this origins and classes part, the comp name is enough. But according to the poll, uh, they like it, so I'm keeping it. Um, it looks fancy as well with the colors. So. Um, somebody, uh, I mean, I, I, I always uh, remove comps where it, when I think they're no longer A or S tier. I try to keep the list of comps short. Um, and uh, I often got questions, this comp was good, I was playing this comp, now it's no longer on there, can you, can you do something? So I made a, um, another tab with all comps, which I update every, every week or so, or every two weeks, where I just put all the old comps in there. So if, if you ever want to play Space Jam or Star Guardians, you can just go to this other tab and uh, find it there. Um, so I keep getting the same questions. So I've uh, made a fact as well, a frequently asked questions thingy, but uh, probably needs some more work. Then I've done the, I've added a column for starting items for the opening carousel, because this was also something that, uh, that people wanted. The thing is, um, it's, it's difficult, you know, depending on which items you prioritize, which build path you're going for a specific comp, there's no one item that's always the best. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, I try to get a second opinion on it as well, but uh, I mean, you should you should just look at the item probably and try to figure out what you're doing. And uh, there's also a column called best map. So these these are only in the uh, actual spreadsheet. You won't find these in the picture on the uh, Reddit post. And the the information for best map actually comes from um, metatft.com. So they uh, for each comp they actually list. Uh, the average placement for specific uh, galaxies. So um, they show uh, which comps work better on Fawn Galaxy, Reroll Galaxy. Some comps are only best on normal galaxy. For example, I think Brawler Blaster, they don't perform better on uh, specific galaxies. So I get that data from there, look at it, put it in there so you can get an idea which comps to play on certain galaxies. And uh, for future updates, um, I'm, I've, I've tried to fiddle with uh, the Google Sheets, adding functions and stuff, but it's uh, very tricky. One thing I'm considering is uh, changing the theme to something darker, like a dark theme. I, somebody made made a picture and it, it looked okay, um, but it's it's a lot of work. I'm I'm not sure if it's possible to uh, to automate it. I probably have to change the color scheme for the whole thing. So that's what I'm considering. Maybe I'll do a poll and ask if that's uh, something people want or not. Yeah, that would be dark theme would be really a, an, an interesting idea. Would you ever consider turning this spreadsheet into an app for you know Androids and iOS? Uh, funny you ask because uh, just yesterday I got approached by um, an overlay, uh, an overlay uh, site. They're interested in working with me to use the data from the spreadsheet. Um, so I'm considering uh, doing this. Yes.
Yeah, I feel like uh, with with how much work you, you put in uh, into it, because I'm sure it is a lot of work, uh, I'm sure of getting a way to sort of benefit from it, which is, you know, if there's any monetary benefit for, for you from it, I, you know, I'll be 100% up for it. And even if you if you had, you know, links for donations to towards this, you know, I know me and at least a few of my friends would definitely be up for, you know, supporting you because it's such a good tool for us. So that's something you, you should you should think about, you know, maybe adding a little donation button like PayPal link or something like that in in a corner. So uh, when looking at the different metas and things like that, what do you think was the most interesting meta in set three? So I really enjoyed the laser printer with Fresh. I, I loved it. Uh, you put Sona in there, give her all the mana printer stuff and uh, you put Thresh next to her and then he just pulls in Velkos and you've got laser beams going all over the place. I, I enjoyed it. For me, it was far too short. So this uh, meta only developed in the last uh, you know, week or days for this specific comp. Yeah? So mana printer was uh, longer, but uh, the printer was only a week or so that you could play it. And then it got uh, nerfed again. So that made me a bit sad. The most interesting uh, meta development for me was, um, I think, uh, 10.9, the adjustment of um, percentages for for um, one cost, two cost, or two cost, not I think three costs as well. So before we had a slow roll three cost meta where you try to reach level six and then you stay level six and try to three star your three cost units, and all of a sudden. That was no longer an option because uh, it didn't work as well because of the adjusted percentages. And instead, hyper rolling is back all of a sudden. We know hyper rolling since uh, Void Sin from set one. And uh, that's the first time we had uh, hyper rolling. And um, yeah, so Candyland popped up. And an interesting meta development. I mean, everybody was uh, crying Candyland is terrible, it's busted, we got a B patch. And they, they left it running, and then we got Shredder, another hyper roll comp that counters specifically Candyland, and also uh, Void counters it, I guess. So um, yeah, that that was very interesting to watch for me. Yeah. So you clearly spend a lot of time sort of researching the builds, the meta, the items, and things like that. Your spreadsheet is really great at sort of fi looking at and finalize realizing you know what's going to be my late game build, what I need to go for items and champions and things like that. Do you have any advice on, like, in your personal opinion, can you recommend any streamers that are really good at explaining, you know, TFT? Because, uh, you know, how to play early game, how to play mid game, how to transition some things like that. Are there any sort of streamers that you particularly enjoy watching? Okay, so uh, there's so many entertaining and skilled streamers that it's really hard to pick uh, pick one. It's it's a matter of taste, I guess. They all have their own unique play style and opinion on what's good and bad. And they tend to disagree with one another a lot. So if you go to one streamer's chat and said this streamer said that, they'll say that's uh, that's insane. It's absolutely not true. <laughs> so I think if you want to learn from a streamer, it's important to pay attention to uh, what units they're using as early carries, um, at what levels they're spending gold on XP or rolls. So while you're playing, it's 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 easy to just uh, be entertained and switch off the brain and just uh, watch it happening. But uh, try to look at what round are they on, how much gold are they on, what units are they playing. Um, that that's what I try to take away from it. That's what I try to take over into my gameplay. And also try to um, make suggestions in chat or ask questions because the feedback you receive will help confirm or correct your own. Uh, judgment on how best to play the game. Amazing. So as I mentioned, the your spreadsheet, your TFT spreadsheet really helps out the competitive TFT community. Is there a way how the competitive TFT community can actually help you with the spreadsheet? Is it, you know, just commenting on your uh, posts that you make uh, on competitive TFT subreddit? Or is there any other way how people can sort of cont contribute to this? Sure. So I'm uh, super appreciative of uh, all these things. Um, I'm always up for suggestions for improvement, uh, critique the content, um, make constructive criticism. Um, I'm open. I'm open to this. Um, 
And I've often used the feedback that I've received at, for improvement or even straight up corrections. I do make mistakes. Um, and when people call me out on it, I try to look at it and uh, see if, uh, if they're right. Um, I've got some sources that I use every week. They don't change. They keep updating their tier lists. Um, and then there's also every once in a while you've got uh, a challenger appears, uh, makes a really excellent um, tier list for the current patch and doesn't post it to Reddit. And I mean, guys, just post it to Reddit. Everybody will see. Everybody can use it. It's just you just you're just gonna have it for one week, so uh, post it as soon as you can, and then I will find it as well. So I guess if you stumble upon, I don't know, one of these high challenges that make a tier list, and uh, you you don't see it on Reddit, then uh, hit me up, send me the link, and I can uh, include it. The more data I have to work with, the better the results in the spreadsheet. All right, amazing. So, is there anything else you'd like to say to sort of anyone watching this video? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I read all the comments on Reddit and really appreciate anybody who takes the time to uh, write a line. Also, uh, I appreciate when people share the sheet. Um, if people ask for a good site, that makes me really happy. And I'd like to shout out um, all the content creators, tier list creators, data analytics sites. So this will be a sh short shout out bit. Uh, Ace of Spades and Mobilitics.gg, Bolo Gesang and Ladakh. Uh, Tian and metacoms.com, kda.gg and metatft.com, bunny muffins, and we got St. Vicious, basic, chat skis, D9 soju, solas, tabs, kurum, primal, and jinx, and probably many others, but those are the ones most often uh, posting and sharing stuff. And lastly, also Mod and the team at Riot. For all the hard work they put into the game uh, i think they're doing a really good job i'm enjoying the game yeah amazing well thank you so much for joining uh for joining me today as i mentioned i can't tell you you know i, I can't thank you enough for for helping me out so you know i managed to finally reach plat one i'm so close to diamond diamond four a friend of mine also when i mentioned that i'm going to be interviewing you he said like specifically uh, to thank you because he finally yesterday managed to reach masters as well and it was all because of your spreadsheet because he always has it on his second one there's like his morning ritual is open up competitive tft screen and then go into the spreadsheet and see what's happening and only then go playing so once again thanks so much for joining me and uh see you soon